Hello, everyone. I'm back from vacation. I am very exhausted. I had to take the red eye flight home, and I don't get much sleep on planes that have turbulence and roaring engines and screaming kids and all that fun stuff that comes with air travel. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> excuse me if I make it easy today. And we're going to talk about the Transformers Tuesday reveals that I missed. Uh, and it's actually kind of a good thing I missed because new things have come up since... Uh, the big official reveals yesterday, and we get to actually talk about them in full now. So to begin, we're going to start with, well, we're going to start with what's obvious for me. We're going to start with Dinobot, who has been redone in his original toy colors, and it's an interesting take. Um, so yeah, we can all make the joke. Everyone has made the joke. He looks like a raw chicken. He looks like you freshly killed and plucked a chicken. It's just this really weird, like, pale, fleshy tone, much like I have. Uh, if I look at him in robot mode, he kind of looks like a pro wrestler to me. So he's got, like, the orange trunks and uh, orange kick pads. He's kind of barefoot, so, you know, it gets kind of a riddle thing. Uh, and, uh, and like, a, like a really hairy chest. Like, that's what I'm getting from, uh, that's what I'm getting from this Dinobot. It's a we it's weird. It's weird to go back to like his original color scheme and just see how odd it is when you apply it to the new figure. Because there is a there's a little bit of discrepancy here. You know, like I I think the original colors were a little bit more uh, a little bit more spread out. Uh, the you had like translucence in the legs rather than the solid colors. So they had a little bit more variety in the tones. So it's a little bit, it is a little bit weird to bring it all the way back to the toy colors. Though I, I fully acknowledge this is a completely valid repaint uh, since, the, since uh, Dinobot in show and in toy were so different from each other. So I don't mind it in that regard, but man, is it funny to laugh at. It's going to be in the buzzworthy Bumblebee line, which again raises the question, what is that line about? For, for a toy line that started as, this is kind of like a Bumblebee celebration line. It has quickly devolved into whatever repaint we don't have anywhere else or we don't want to put into selects, we're going to put in Buzzworthy. But I guess as long as it gets the options out, right? That's always the thing for me is like, even if like, if you're not into it, fine. It's not in, it's not for you. There's people who are going to be nostalgic for Dinobot's toy, even above how he looked in the show because it was the toy they grew up with. So I have no issue with them doing this, even though I find it weird. And of course, repaints give you that second opportunity to get a hold of something that otherwise was difficult the first time. Uh, case in point, toy colored pterosaur. I really actually like this. So again, the show added a the show actually simplified the color scheme to pterosaur, bringing in a lot of silvers and taking away a lot a lot of the noteworthy details. So. A much more colorful take on Pterosaur, more purples, the green uh, splotches on him, uh, and yeah, looking like really, really nice. I know people who really prefer the toy color Pterosaur over the cartoon accurate, completely valid opinion, and yeah, like this is actually like a really nice alternative. It's not too far off, is the thing. It's like, if you need show accurate, then yeah, you're stuck going for the golden disc one. But this isn't too bad. Like, if this is all you're stuck with, this is not a terrible alternative. The beast mode still looks as weird as ever. Uh, it's. I want to say. I want to say the mouth didn't get quite as detailed since it's going toy accurate. It doesn't really need it. Um, I kind of wish there. I. I mean, it's accurate, but I kind of wish there were more of those little green blotches because he does look just very solid red here. Uh, you know, personal preferences. But yeah. Uh, toy pterosaur not a bad addition definitely looks better than the grimlock I, I think i can say that objectively i think we can all agree that looks a little bit better than the grimlock did all right so moving on uh i got the i guessed completely wrong on the next movie masterpiece i i you can tell how much i don't follow masterpiece movie toys when i didn't even realize barricade was like one of their first ones they did uh no 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 of course not uh we have Blackout, which is going to be huge. 
And yeah, this time he gets to be as screen accurate as possible. There's effect parts. Scorponok is there, and Scorponok's articulated. Uh, it's a really beautiful rendition of, of the uh, Sikorsky. Uh, lots of, you can see lots of little paint details to bring out extra. There's a little bit of fading uh, to the paint scheme. It's really nicely done. Like It looks very, very cool. Um, it's weird in that this is a very accurate depiction of uh, Blackout's robot mode. And that does come with a few oddities, like how low his shoulders sit on his torso. Uh, some, like, uh, the digitigrade legs he has, which look very thin for his body mass. Uh, it's, it's a trickier one. It's a trickier one. It's cool, though. It's cool, though. It looks really good. Now, they did reveal some more about this particular one in the meantime, which is why it's good that I didn't really have the chance to talk about it day one, so we can talk about this now. So, we got some scale comparison to the Studio Series. Uh, quite a bit taller. Quite a bit taller. Here, you can really see that discrepancy in, like, the shoulder placement. You can see how low they sit here. Uh, and then, like, it doesn't look too far up, but it uh, the, the shoulder, the arms also, as a result, don't look quite as lanky in the bicep. This does look strange. I'm not gonna lie, it's more accurate, but it looks strange. That's all, and that's all I'm really going to say there. What I do like is that they finally got those blades to all like cascade down in the right direction. They're not jutting out anywhere any anymore, so they finally figured that one out at least. Uh, we also got okay. There's the profile. The profile really brings out just how big the visual difference is here. Yeah, you can see like the legs here, like a lot thicker on the masterpiece version from the side. Um, it's hard hard to tell, like, because I was looking at how thin the thighs looked in that mode, so I can't really quite bring it out. You can see a little bit of extra junk hanging in the back too. Uh, not too bad, not too bad considering what it does when you see like the other angle. So the other angle is uh, gonna be from the bottom. We'll see that. They are very much bragging about how accurate this one is. Like some, this also comes with some statements from the designers at Hasbro and they're really proud of just how much more accurate uh, this take on uh, uh, Blackout is because they actually have a licensed vehicle mode this time so they're going as hard as they can on this one and then of course the underside which is not one we I expected us to get to see but it's actually a pretty impressive feat we have a completely enclosed underside that's actually really cool on a helicopter where, uh, you know, the underside is seen a little bit more often because it's, you know, it's a vertical takeoff landing thing. It's, you, you see undersides of jets a lot, too. Not, not to say you don't, but, like, I do think it is cool that it is a completely solid underside. The cargo bay door works, and that's where you store Scorponok. Uh, there is actually articulation to the tail they actually like went all out. This looks actually like super impressive. Even if I'm not particularly into movie designs, I can really appreciate just how much engineering has gone into making this thing as accurate as possible and functionable as possible. It's a really impressive job. Like really impressive. Uh, yeah, it's not what I'm going to be going for because I'm out of masterpiece in general, not even just movie masterpiece. Uh, but I know I know some people who are going to be down for this hard. Um, I believe somewhere we got a mention of the price as well. But I'm not quite seeing it here. Let's see. Was another we do have a we have another article, uh, which also lets us know uh, size comparison to masterpiece Megatron. Megatron still gets to be the biggest one in the line. Uh, not a real shock there. A little. Uh, not quite as tall as Starscream as the head, but if you count all the way up to the top, it was kibble taller. Yeah, and there the look at the different vehicle modes, just so you get a sense of scale. Really cool. Like I, this is like a really cool visual to give us for an upcoming toy. Like this is something I could definitely use more of. Uh, anytime Hasbro wants to throw a few more of those at us. Okay, it is confirmed as a Target exclusive in the U.S. Alright, so, um, but I don't think, uh, 
I could have sworn I saw like that we had a price somewhere, but I'm not seeing it now. That's no. You see all the, uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, yeah, maybe, okay, I thought I saw we got a listing of the price, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, keep in mind, I, my head's been out of this for, a f about, like, a week and a half now, so if something shot by me, that's, uh, not really surprising, uh, let's move on here, let's move on here, we've got Red Cog, who is literally called Red Cog, uh, rocking a brand new red color schemes, fitting one of the other generic cogs in the uh, actual uh, Netflix series. I mean, you look. I mean, it's black and red and silver. There's nothing like you're not really gonna find anything wrong with that color scheme. That's pretty easy. What I like here is that they've done the same thing they did with the Centurion drone. That they have thrown in a whole bunch of more accessories into this release to give you a little bit more to do. You can see like these green, like green, like canisters, like he's like rocking mutagen ooze or something. That's included. Uh, long barrels, uh, ex barrel extensions. Uh, there's a lot more going on in him. So he's a very, very well armed figure, working as like a full-on accessory pack just like the centurion drone really cool really uh, really really cool way of uh giving us some extra firepower for some of our toys and some of these molds i do not recognize so a lot of it is new engineering from the looks of it one in particular that the designers pointed out was that one of the guns this one in particular is actually designed to plug into the back of Earthrise slash Kingdom RC, which is going to allow the entirety of a cog to plug in as over-the-shoulder cannons. Uh, this is to match the actual uh, the the actual visual from the cartoon. That's actually really really cool thought and detail. I mean, it looks absolutely ridiculous on her. And, of course, it doesn't fall over her shoulders the same way. Because she's got a little bit in the way of her shoulders here. It's it's a, it's a really interesting, like, and, like, super specific way of actually, like, making this functionality. And, like, I almost wonder, like, that's such a huge port in the back of RC. I think when I first got it, I just assumed, like, this is just, like, the toy hollowed out. I didn't know I didn't know if this actually had a function but looking at the tabs around it it does seem like it would it seems like I don't know if this is a intentional plan from the start but it does look like it was intended for this particular use and if it wasn't that's just super clever by the Hasbro designers to come up with this um, yeah it's, it's cool it's cool that they threw in an accessory to specifically get some show accurate usage out of it and it does add more abilities to uh, red cog i do think like the big advantage to things like this is like the weaponizer pattern really was interesting like if you had enough parts if you had enough imagination to make them work and more of these guys out there is not a bad thing especially if we're going to fill out some of our netflix ranks but uh yeah, uh, my, my my only concern, my only concern is, like, that scrawny little RC toy holding up an entire deluxe that's hanging off of her back. I'm going to be really interested to see just how capable our actual, like, retail figures are to do this. I'm wondering just, like, how much fidgeting am I going to have to do and how stable it's going to be. But that's going to be fun to figure out now, isn't it? All right, so that is my thoughts on the new reveals lots of good new stuff uh and actually like really in attentive to fans on this one like there's a lot more behind the scenes stuff on blackout uh not only you know well, if i can actually click on the right things if i can click on the right things but no um i do i do like like the behind the scenes stuff on knockout or blackout i rem i do like uh all the different scales they're trying harder to get more behind the scenes and uh more just like stat details out about some of these figures i think that helps a lot in realizing just how big these productions are so those are my thoughts thank you guys for joining me i know it's not much of a video to come back to um i'm exhausted 
and I still have to clear things out so I can unpack and see and show off the epic toy haul. We're going to be doing it in multiple videos because a lot went on on this trip and there's a lot to show off too much for one video. So expect like two or three over the course of the weekend. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Appreciate it as always. And I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.